Do you have anything on the image side? What we've started doing is building out video ad templates in Canva. Can you give us some examples on high converting design elements? What we can rely on is the... The one I liked was the last one and uh, <laughs> you know, it surprised you sometimes. You can't always take lessons from the biggest. What are there some key takeaways or you know, some of the tips that you can give us? Ecom Squeezed Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Ecom Squeezed. I am your host, Sebastian, founder of Retail Outsource. Today, we are excited to have George Reed, the founder of Amazon Design Kit. George is an expert on Amazon creatives, and he is here to share tips on how you can improve Amazon listing to boost your brand and increase conversions. Welcome to the show, George. Hi, Sebastian. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and I'm looking forward to, to digging into some topics and seeing if we can share some value. That's great. Uh, so just uh, give us a background, you know, how, what inspired you to start um, Amazon Design Kit and you also have a newsletter as well. So just uh, brief us on that, please. I think it was inspired by people asking for examples. So we were initially running an Amazon advertising company, which we still do. And we do offer in the newsletter kind of lots of suggestions and tips because we share in that newsletter all of the great Amazon posts that we see on LinkedIn and Twitter. We put them all inside the newsletter as, as bullet points. But people kept on asking me, do you, do you have any examples of you know, good Amazon content, a good infographic, a good A plus page? And I think the best products are the ones that are born out of the market saying, can we have this? So I started with literally going out and collecting them, putting them inside a folder and then giving people access to the folder. And then it was, okay, well, now we need to think about how do we categorize things and folders isn't really the best for that because you have to keep clicking into multiple folders. We started evolving it into kind of fully fledged platform where it's a gallery in essence, and you can filter all the way through the 30,000 images that we now have. Um, and then you can go, let's bookmark some items. And then when you bookmark, you can categorize based on what you want. Um, but it all really comes down to a Pinterest board for Amazon, basically, of how do we inspire people so they don't have to sit there if they're lacking creative ideas how do we go and give them those ideas and it's evolved a lot since then oh that's great those uh, thirty thousand images um, are they royalty free so if you take uh, the package we can use that image i assume right? yeah so to clarify there's two two aspects to it or historically mm -hmm. there were two aspects the first aspect was we would go to amazon we would find great examples from all the brilliant brands out there and we would then store those examples inside this gallery. But what we then started to find were people were saying, I still need help actually taking that example and making it into something of my own. And that's when the templates were born. So the second aspect that we introduced was we would go with our design team and create templates for A plus premium, templates for storefronts, templates for infographics. And if you then bought our one-time license for I think at the time was like 90 pounds. Um, you could then access those templates inside Figma design tool and mm -hmm. now Canva as well. And that meant that it's a drag and drop. So we've built it. So this is a, a really great page on Amazon that we found. We've recreated it and you can go in and change all of the fonts, change all of the copy, the color schemes, the images and make it your own. 60, 70, 80% of the design effort has been done already, which means wow. you can you can get it done faster and obviously more cost effectively. And you can be more confident that the conversion is higher as we took inspiration from pages that already were doing very well on Amazon based on data, basically. Great. For example, for a new premium A-plus content, it's going to cost around... Um, in, in, in the range of around five hundred dollars, right, per A plus content, and if you can save like you know sixty, as you mentioned, that's a lot of uh, saving, right, in terms of labor. Did I think uh, you mentioned your package is around um, one seventy dollars or something, right? So you can pay itself with with one uh, A plus content if you are doing it. Yeah, exactly. You know, I would say five hundred is probably now on the lower end of the spectrum mm. of if you're paying an agency we, we do yeah. offer the service as well 
And if we create a bespoke one for you, it yeah. starts at something like a thousand pounds or twelve hundred, and we're probably mid range because we we focus on quality and we don't want to go cheap. Yeah. But then you do have people who charge a lot more than that. I've heard two thousand dollars for a page yeah. and two yeah. and a half thousand for a storefront. In my opinion, w with the templates, what I'm focusing on is if you look at Shopify stores, um, say a Gymshark or say whatever, Simple or Modern, people who have good Shopify stores, often there's nothing complex or brand new and exciting about them. The stores, the layouts, maybe only kind of five or six different wireframes to, to what we're seeing here. And those pages on Shopify have sold millions and millions and millions with great conversion rate. So the same applies of Amazon. We don't need to go back to a blank piece of paper and create something 100% original to convert the hero cosmetics page for the hero patches um, or the mighty patches I should say by hero cosmetics their a plus page is simply a image on the left heading and button on the right and then the next one is image on the right heading and button on the left it's a well-known proven way of just displaying content simply so by by just replicating something that's working well, you don't have to go through all of that mental energy and cognitive load of coming up with the idea because the idea is there, it works. And we know it works because think of the Amazon interface as a whole, all the product detail pages, the top above the fold look the same, like it's the same layout. So all we're saying is just, you know, that layout clearly works really well for Amazon. Why would you then go and completely redesign it even though it's already working. And what we've done with the templates is gone. We'll go create you all those layouts, the basic wireframes. Now you go and take action with them and hopefully save a lot of money and time so you can have a good page online faster and hopefully enjoy the benefits of a better conversion rate. Great, great. So I assume you have templates for, you know, the basic A plus content and the premium A plus content, right? On your website. We actually just focused on premium okay. purely because it's all moving to premium and Amazon's data suggests and our own data when we've done split tests suggests that the premium converts better. So if you can get premium, it's logical to go get premium. So we're just building it on A plus premium templates at the moment, storefront templates, and we've just built a whole new system for, for storefront templates. So you can create multiple templates even faster and then infographics. And that's our, our kind of next move now is mm -hmm. we're looking to build design systems for people, which I did a podcast with the lunch of norm recently on this of how do we create you a design system so you can take not just one page, but you can take 50 pages and you can create pages in bulk and make changes rapidly rather than change one thing at a time. We can actually change 30 pages at once. And, and that's the next step for this of how do we go do things in bulk to make it even faster. Great, 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 great. And for this conversion in, compared to the, uh, the old version of A plus content and the premium one, what's the different conversion you have seen or that people you, uh, spend more time right on the premium one? So what are the figures or percentage uh, look like on those? I believe in the top of my head, Amazon quoted on average 11 or 12 to 15%. Mm. But naturally, it's going to be category dependent. So you sure. might find that someone in the beauty category cares a lot more about the details and understanding the five steps that are required to get the perfect result. That's better delivered with a sliding module in A plus premium, which wouldn't be available in basic. So it's going to vary greatly, but there's no fixed figure. All we know is Amazon's data, which is probably most trustworthy mm -hmm. and um, aggregated across multiple categories tells us 11 to 15 percent. Do we believe Amazon's data? I don't know. It varies. I think that's the best uh, data we have right at the moment. It comes directly from them. Great, great, great. Uh, my next question, do, do you have anything on the image side, like a hero image side or infographic lifestyle image, or is that or just a plus content that you focus on? So with the examples, we collect every single type of image you can have on Amazon. 
So the examples, we have mm -hmm. everything from hero images to video ads to storefront subpages, to brand stories, to infographics, like every single type, as it gets released, we start to collect it. And now we've got a Chrome extension to collect that. So the users of the kit can collect it for themselves as well, which means new ideas are getting uploaded every second of every day once once the, the users start actioning on that. But with the templates, we're just focusing at the moment on A plus premium storefront and infographics. But as we build out the design system, which is the next step to this, we will have that for, for brand stories as well. We've just released some um, video ad templates as well in Canva and some training on that as well. So if you're a Canva user, which was one of the big bits of feedback and Amazon are really pushing video ads at the moment. What we've started doing is building out video ad templates in Canva and we've got a Canva certified expert in to help with it. And he's now recording training on how you can take a template and go and make your own video for it. So you can get access to video ads sooner rather than waiting because it's been around for quite a long time and a lot of people still struggle with that because people think videos are expensive but canva and training and templates make it much more accessible and cost effective great great so for example if i know some basic knowledge about canva and if i use your design kit will i able to create the a plus content or does it need to be done from the design person who is experienced it comes down to speed how hmm. fast do you want to be so I am not an expert at Canva or Figma, our two primary tools, but I am able to go in and make these changes and I can do it, but my designers do it in, you know, five times faster. And yeah. just watching the screen, you're, you're amazed because you become quite lethargic with your approach. You really have to value your own time and going, is me spending three hours doing that template or series of template editing because you might do it for five products and i might be valued at a hundred dollars an hour so it's three hundred dollars is it more logical to go and pay someone a hundred dollars an hour who's very good but they can do it all in one hour or 30 minutes and therefore the cost is a hundred dollars or fifty dollars and and i didn't come up with that logic tim ferris did a lot, a lot longer ago than i um, can imagine but that would be my way of taking it. so yes you can do it yourself and yes we're introducing more and more training but you might find that hiring someone on upwork or fiverr with Figma or Canva expertise and sitting there with them, they can do it faster. Particularly if you have a, an interactive conversation where you have a sh screen share and you're directing them live and they're just firing through those changes. And that way the communication gap the, from you expressing your idea to their, them actioning it is as tiny as possible because you've got the idea. If I text you it, you pick it up in a half an hour, you then sit down at your computer, that's then being 50 minutes, an hour, and the idea's gone. Whereas if we sit here collaboratively and do it, yes, my time is being consumed, but we're so much faster. And I find that is a really good way because we wanna minimize the time from me who might be more creative having the idea and the thing getting done. That's great. Uh, that's a great angle to look into it. Um, how important is the design when it comes to converting traffic into customers? You know, can you give us some examples on high converting design elements? Ultimately, the product offer always wins. So I saw an example a year ago, a friend of mine was helping someone sell mugs on Amazon which you drink out of. Mm -hmm. And the, the product listing that became number one at the time on Amazon US and was absolutely killing it, had the most awful infographics, product photos, description, everything. But the product offering of what it was and for the price it was, was so 
perfect that it became top seller and had brilliant conversion. We as designers or conversion rate optimists or optimization as people, whatever, would say that's, that's a really bad listing, but it doesn't matter because the product offer was very good. And I say this because even if you have the most beautiful design, which, which does look stunning and the weighting and size of all your fonts are clear across devices, the brand guidelines have been followed across every touch point from the hero image right the way through to your brand story or storefront, and it all looks and feels the same. If the offer is bad, people still aren't buying it. So you need to you need to still have that first. But that being said, let's assume you have um, a very good product offering, then your job is in essence to follow kind of some basics, such as can you actually process the information on the page quickly? So we see this a lot with the, the very second image. We have the hero image, the first one, and the second one, normally an infographic, which is why should you buy this product or how does this product solve your problems? Is the information there easy to digest and quickly? And that could be either through a visual or it could be through text. And some people might just simply have a font that is too small. So it, it slows me down processing, consuming that information. And as soon as I'm slowed down, the conversion like conversion rate likelihood goes down. So there are many basic principles like that. And what we're trying to bake now into the design system, so the templates have evolved to the system we're building now, which will be released in the next month or two, is we've already figured that out of, okay, like never go beneath font size 18 for an infographic, for instance. That would be a rule of thumb we're playing with at the moment. It changes with different fonts. So we already do the thinking. And therefore, when you have the system, we've kind of got these set of rules, which you can follow as guidelines. You can deviate, but as a good rule of thumb, don't make your text too small. So we're trying to avoid that by putting these, these boundaries and guidelines in place. So that would be um, probably my best, best. Great, great, great. And in terms of, um, you know, the, we have uh, the mobile view as well, right? So a lot of customers are using mobile nowadays and uh, the, the desktop or PC are there. So we need to optimize it for both of them, right? So you mentioned about the, the font size, right? So how does it work for both uh, the devices? You would upload different mm -hmm. modules in the A+. So when we designed in our team, they would upload different graphics for different devices. And at the moment with storefronts, Amazon kind of do the, the resizing themselves. Sometimes that looks good, sometimes bad. I kind of get the feeling they will eventually make storefronts upload your mobile version because I mean, websites have had that for years, right? And they've done it with the A+. Um, same with brand story. I think in time, they might slowly just move more features over to watch your video version, video, watch your mobile, watch your desktop. But I don't know how long that would be. But the main thing is you're, you're actually utilizing and constantly thinking about, okay, let me open this page on mobile and see what it looks like rather than just assuming it's fine. Great, great, great. In terms of um, images, we have the image stack, right? On the product page, like the, the hero image yeah. and then infographic um, lifestyle image. A view from different angles and then maybe videos do you have any specific order so that you have to follow to for better no, conversion not in my opinion i think it it comes down to the category and the target customer and what your competition are doing there's no there's no fixed ruling for that and again now with with manage your experiments at amazon you should be experimenting so i can sit here and preach and say hey you definitely need an infographic with four bullet points on the very first or very second image. And then you go try it, it doesn't work. But George says it does, so I must just continue. But ultimately, what you really want to be doing is coming up with a rough plan, which might be kind of problems we solve, problems we solve with a lifestyle, and then maybe something else, maybe a review or a comparison or whatever. Create all those assets, test it offline first with something like product opinion or with something like PicFu and get feedback and saying, which order would you want to get this information in? What is most important to you? What is the main problem you're looking to solve as you are a target customer? And product opinion, I like that because you can import your own customers. So they're they are literally your target audience rather than 
just some random and then testing it again on Amazon. But there's, there's no set rule in my opinion mm. because it's category and target market dependent and we've got the ability to test. So just test it. it takes longer, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, good. I was, good uh, results. Exactly. I was surprised as well. It means I recently done a test on PicFu. So I have put like four images and you know, one of the images was my favorite and I thought the rest were rubbish. But when the results came, I was surprised. The The one I liked was the last one. And uh, you know, it surprised you sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's why our opinions don't matter. So many of the clients we do design work with, I'm not their target customer. So mm -hmm. I can sit there and go, yeah, I like this one, but I'm not the target customer. My opinion doesn't really matter that much when it comes to making that final decision data always wins great 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 i want to shift now towards uh, the customer demographics um, right we can get the details from brand analytics right so can we include those pain points or the customer demographics on a plus content right you know for, for example if you are on beauty and if a specific demographic is using your product or so the mm. images need to replicate you know the same age right what are the examples you have seen i think th this is a really good point of what if you have two different categories of demographic mm. for simple terms, kind of over or under 30 years old? Maybe you do target both. And with A+, plus, we don't have the option to display different pages based on the person landing. That could be a thing in the future. But with something like storefronts, I see them as more of an advanced version of A+, plus, really, because we can have multiple pages for the same product. So if I sell, I have this Nalgene water bottle. If I sell this Nalgene water bottle, different age people drink it and different gender people drink it. And what I'd be looking to do is creating my wireframe and maybe duplicating it four times. And for very simple breakdowns, you might go male, female, below 30, male, female, above 30. And you would have for the below 30, a female below 30 years old drinking out of it. And then you would have the same male and then male and female for above. So you would just look to change the images and you would look to change the copy to target those individual users. So it resonates with them more. And because people share Amazon accounts, so we can't always rely on that data. What we can rely on is the search string. So when we're advertising, we can look to drive people from search results, searching a particular keyword, water bottle or young person's water bottle or sporty water bottle, or you might go hard wearing, long lasting water bottle might be more suitable for someone else or men's water bottle or whatever. Water bottle is not a great example, but still. And when they click, we would send them through to a different storefront based on their search term. So if I was going men's water bottle, um, or a young man's water bottle, which is an unlikely search term, admittedly, I would then land on a sub 30 year old water bottle and I would see pictures of people who, well, I'm actually 32 now, so that doesn't even apply, but I would see people who, who look younger drinking out of it and that would therefore resonate with me. So we're looking to match up those different demographics we might have with our content and our copy. It might be younger people copy or more female orientated copy in order to resonate with the person searching. And that is more granular, but I don't think it's overly challenging to do if you have the design system in place because the wireframe set up, you're just looking to replace text and replace images. And then you're uploading the same design, really. It's just some small minor differences. But the logic dictates and this applies from Facebook advertising is we want people clicking on yeah. certain ads to land on certain pages which resonate with them. Exactly the same. Great, 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 great. And uh, you also worked with like, you know, the top brands like Apple, Bose and Lego. What are some key takeaways or, you know, some of the tips that you can give us uh, based on, you know, for those sort of top brands that you have done? That was, yeah, there's a the caveat to that is as a member of our team was at Amazon for eight, nine years on the okay. vendor side of the business. So a, l a lot of those learnings are kind of kept secure with, with her rather than me, but they were more vendor focused in terms of how you might go about your negotiations, etc. But 
that's not really an area that we focus on at the moment because and often you look at some of those those brands sometimes they're they're brilliant with what they do sometimes they're not so you can't always take lessons from the biggest lego were, were pretty consistent though to be fair okay great miss so i've seen like um, the anchor the store friend a plus content always really and they keep on changing if there is any season like a uh, prime day they will change the storefront to reflect that so it's based on occasion right so i think uh, for the conversion rate optimization we need to be proactive right in that case so it's more what the customer want and based on that uh, the, the the season or the time frame yeah absolutely and, and that comes back to having a good system in place because in theory if your system's in place you can quite quickly with tools like figma create a wireframe for seasonal periods such as black friday cyber monday prime day and then apply that to all of your products once you've got the wireframe set up but it's all about having a system and a lot of people struggle struggle a lot with that but there are smarter ways of working and that's that's what we're trying to slowly bring in to the design kit is how do we keep offering these additional pieces that make your overall experience just easier and faster and more cost effective to get good designs seasonally across different ranges for different demographics and that's kind of where we're really that's the end goal it comes back down to yes examples yes saving stuff with the chrome extension yes providing templates yes bookmarking categorizing commenting but that final one which we're slowly working on now is how do we give people a system so they can do it themselves and how do we then teach them how to do it great you mentioned about the add-on right that you that you're working on currently could you just yeah. give us more details how it works and you know how sellers can benefit from it yeah exactly so it should be released in the next 24 48 hours days the 11th of july so figure that one out Congrats. but it's in essence a chrome extension and what it enables you to do is when you're scrolling through amazon and you see a design that you like or a video that you like with one click you can then save that when it saves it will download to your device what it will also do is it will send it to your amazon design kit interface and mm. within that interface you can then bookmark and categorize based on what you need such as i want to save all these graphics and videos for this campaign or this product so it allows you to be very organized and constantly get inspiration but what also is happening is as you're saving that inspirations get added to the the shared library of examples so this means that the more people that use it the better the experience is getting for everybody because if you and me are both using it at the same time seb when you're logging on you're seeing these examples coming into the shared feed and you might be going, wow, George, like this George guy, like you wouldn't see my name, but he's sharing some really good things at the moment or saving some good things. But you would still have your area, which is kept separate to keep your own kind of files, files saved. That's what we're working on at the moment, 98% done. It's now just getting approved by the Chrome extension kind of um masters i guess you could say they sign these things off they see you're not doing anything fraudulent um and then and then it will be live for everyone to use it's a massive time saver so the way i view it is a, a pinterest board for amazon great great is that comes as a part of your current package for amazon design kit or is that a you know, separate one the add-on it's part of the current package and at the moment we, we just have a lifetime license you pay once and you get everything really that i've spoken about but we'll be slowly moving to a subscription model in the next month or so so for those who who are kind of looking to grab a deal the logic is get the lifetime license before it, it does and ultimately has to become a little bit more expensive yeah i mean so i have the website open here i think it's um, 168 pounds and you have like a, a lot of templates 3000 templates 3000 uh, 30000 examples 120 templates and there are 200 plus components for a plus content so that's that's amazing yeah that's that's where it's at the moment and i think the next step is like i said that design system a template is really good for making mm. maybe one two or three designs but if you've got 20 products and you want to make 20 storefront pages one for each of them or maybe make 40 because you want to do that demographic piece that we spoke about how do you do that and that's 
we've almost solved it on our end and we're looking to then share what we've solved with others so here you go here's our figma master file and you can now go and create 40 pages very quickly and if you want to split test it's even better because you could then go well i don't know which storefront page is going to convert best and within seconds you can have three different variations of the storefront page that you had already designed and applied across multiple different product lines so that's coming next as well which isn't even on that landing page but it's going to be part of the, the overall package as well as the training on how to use it great great and regarding you know a plus content we need to optimize it for seo as well right so is there anything from your side that thinks uh, like the best way to deal with seo for premium a plus content i would say i'm not an expert in that element of it my amazon guide speaks about this a lot and i think he's got a lot of good learnings that you can take yeah. from their socials so i would advise to go look at that as that's more their area of expertise i focus on making things look fantastic and then there is definitely a logic of should we be pushing seo more because it naturally has an impact but how much of an impact i'm not sure it's a difficult balancing game of if we get them on the page can we convert more if we don't have the seo style a plus or should we focus on just getting them on the page because maybe the main images do more heavy lifting anyway and then that main image carousel so i think steven put some good posts up about that and so there's others so i'll, I'll leave them to talk about that topic because they're, they're more or better positioned yeah exactly regarding the 3d rendering right What's your opinion about having a 3D rendered image as your as the main image? Yeah, that's a good question. I think if you struggle to get a brilliant photo done, then the render is a really good option because photography can be expensive, yeah. and unless you've got multiple products, it can be difficult to get a cost-effective way to take photos because you're taking one. So that's where a render can be really good, and it can be pretty flexible, and you can do a few things with it. Um, the main thing is how's it looking on that search results page and if you have a render and it's stupidly clear and you can read the text better for instance then it's probably a better option i would probably yeah. prefer the render to be honest but okay. i know some people go and they like the photo because they think that people resonate with the photo more because they believe it's more real so yeah like i said if you can afford it get a yeah, data yeah, test yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think for the uh, infographic images, you know, for example, if it's like a uh, like a bottle, you know, like a flask, you can have a exploded view, right? What sort yeah. layers are inside, for example. So exactly. in that case, I think exactly. uh, yeah, renders might work. And um, the other question is that, you know, for the A plus content, it's interactive, right? What all things we can do to make it more interactive? I think it's just using using those options available to you. Far, far too often we see people have just gone for the just get it done mindset mm -hmm. and to just get something up there and they're not then using sliders for instance yeah. and that that improves the customer's experience and isn't it's not overly complicated so you know a, a good case in point might be if you sell supplements and you've got multiple products then what you might do is go well here is what you're going to take during your workout and and then swipe to see step two which is post workout and then swipe to see step three which is two hours after workout and that would be a good way to kind of bring your other products into it there's one example and there are many more but it really depends on on the category and that's why we keep we keep grabbing examples so people can then go see and go right what are others doing just to make it a really engaging page and there's loads like literally thousands of examples which we're collecting every day. So the best thing would just be to, to go look and see, I think, because I could talk for a long time otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Great. And my other question will be regarding AI and the designs. What's your stand on that, on the AI for designs? I think it's certainly something that you should be exploring because it allows you to achieve things like a photo shoot in a lot less time for a lot less money. And for niches of design, such as we need this part of the design process done, such as a photo of a person holding the bottle, that's probably where it's very good. At the moment, from everything I've seen, where you're getting a full page designed, it's it's not too good with that at the moment. And I think it will probably get there, but you equally need to be feeding it good content to begin with. 
So you can't just go, here are my four images that I've got from the factory. Go make me a page because most of what I'm seeing at the moment is pretty bad for that and how scalable it is. I'm not sure either. So I think if you're hyper-focused and you go, I'm looking to get a person lying on some white bed sheets in a beautifully manicured house. Sure. Because you're selling bed sheets, let's say, then that's great that you can get that done with within, you know, 20 minutes of you logging onto Google. That, that area of it is fantastic right now, but the full design, I'm not sure. Not yet. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree with you, George, on that. I mean, we have done a lot of testing and it doesn't look that great. Maybe it will get there at some point, but not yet, I assume. Anyway, I think we have um, a limited time. So th thanks a lot for all the, the insights on the A plus content. We just covered just one point, right, of the, the big Amazon ecosystem. And thank you so much uh, for joining us today, John. It's been fantastic. And before we wrap up, uh, can you let us know in a way can uh, the viewers find your websites? And you know, I assume you already have a podcast, you have a newsletter. So could you please uh, tell a little bit more about that? I will put a link in the show notes as well. Yeah, of course. Well, th thank you as well, Sebastian. It's, it's been brilliant speaking. And the best way to kind of find out more information about that kit is just amzdesignkit.com. And then most of the information you're going to find in there. But otherwise, I'm sure Seb's going to be tagging me on LinkedIn, etc. So feel free to just drop me a message for anything else you might need. But thank you so much, Sebastian. It's been brilliant chatting and looking forward to continuing chatting more in the future as well. Great. Thanks a lot for your time. Have a nice day, George. Bye-bye.